The KTM 450 XCF shares 95% of its parts with the Austrian manufacturer's flagship motocross bike, the 450 SXF, including the same engine, suspension components, and chassis. The differences lie in the larger fuel tank, off-road specific suspension settings, 18-inch rear wheel, kickstand, handguards, and Dunlop AT81 tires. One additional part our test bike wore that does not come stock was a skid plate, which is available through KTM Power Parts. Before the shootout, we mounted a Dunlop T404 street tire on the rear wheel and ran the 450 XCF on our in-house dyno, where it produced 52.12 horsepower at 9,530 RPM and 33.81 pound-feet of torque at 6,970 RPM. The KTM ranks 4th in the horsepower department and 2nd in torque, essentially identical to the Husqvarna FX 450 with a difference of only 0.22 horsepower and 0.13 pound-feet of torque. After the dyno pulls were complete, we fitted Dunlop AT81 tires as we did on all the bikes to ensure consistency and traction among them for the entirety of the test. The 450 XCF's power delivery is smooth from bottom to top and hits progressively harder the higher it gets in RPM. It's characterized by a somewhat mellow hit off the bottom, a plentiful mid-range, and excellent top end and over -rip. The KTM's linear power delivery makes it easy to ride in all conditions, most notably tighter single track. However, a harder hitting bottom end power would contribute to a lighter weight feel and would make it easier to get into the higher RPM without excessive use of the clutch. We also found that switching to the included optional black throttle cam got rid of the chicken wing feeling we had when holding the throttle wide open with the stock white throttle cam installed. The KTM is the second quietest bike in the test, just a bit louder than the Husqvarna, but still pleasantly quiet. The Orange Machine's power delivery is slightly more aggressive and quicker revving than the FX 450 as well. It has a fair amount of engine braking that is useful, but not overpowering. The engine vibrates slightly, which is felt through the handlebar and foot pegs. The Brembo hydraulic clutch works perfectly with its easy pull, and it does not fade under heavy use. It also helps the 450 XCF's Pankle transmission shift smoothly and easily. The 450 XCF has two maps that can be changed via a switch on the left side of the handlebar. It also has traction control, which can be used in either map. Map 1, standard, has less low end grunt than Map 2, aggressive, which pulls better off the bottom end and has more of a torque feel. Map 2 was the preferred choice among test riders. Traction control made each map slightly less responsive and came in handy in tighter, more technical terrain. In the suspension department, the KTM's WP AER48 air fork and WP shock are softer feeling than the Yamaha's and Honda suspension. The components work well on slower to medium speed areas with braking bumps, acceleration bumps, and smaller size trail obstacles. However, in faster paced sections with larger size rollers and bigger impacts such as G-outs and jump landings, the suspension lacks some comfort and predictability in comparison to the Yamaha and Honda. The fork rides higher in the stroke than the two Japanese bikes, and even with its softer overall feel, it offered good bottoming resistance. Test riders were happy with the fork's stock 10.1 bar air pressure setting, but went in on rebound to alleviate its somewhat bouncy feel and to try to get it to ride deeper in the stroke. The shock felt especially soft. Going in on high speed compression and slowing down rebound helped it hold up better and added more control when it got too low in the stroke. Moving on to the handling, the 450 XCF weighed in at 240 pounds on our automotive skills, which ties it with the Husqvarna as the lightest bike in the test. Despite that, neither Austrian machine feels quite as light as you would expect judging by its low reading on the scale some of which has to do with the engine's mellow bottom end and smooth power delivery. Aside from the weight feel, the KTM is a neutral handling bike with impressive cornering ability and good straight line stability. However, it doesn't corner as sharp as the Honda and is not as stable as the Yamaha. The chassis feels longer than the Japanese bikes as well. The KTM has a neutral stance with 105 millimeters of shock sag and is easy to move around on with its narrow radiator shroud area and flat, comfortable seat. It's also the narrowest bike from front to rear. The neck and handlebar has an agreeable bend and less rise than the Pro Taper bar on the Husqvarna, so bar position isn't as critical. The KTM's Brembo brakes are the best in the class, as they offer the most stopping power yet retain a progressive and predictable feel at the lever. The ODI lock-on grips are a nice feature as well. The 450 XCF comes stock with handguards. It and the FX450 are the only two bikes to come with them in stock trim, which test riders appreciate on bushfield trails. We would like to see it come stock with a skid plate too, especially considering there are three brackets on the lower part of the frame to accommodate one. The reasons why it should have one are that it has a powerful yet easy to ride engine, a nimble handling chassis, the strongest brakes, a hydraulic clutch, and is tied for the lightest bike in the test. It's also pleasantly quiet.
The reasons why it did not win are that the WPAER 48 fork falls short of the performance of the stock suspension components on the Yamaha and Honda. Also, the engine lacks some bottom end excitement and vibrates more than it should.